Hi, I'm John with the Futet Technical Support Team, and in this video, I will be going over how to set up the USB 520 and USB 530. Before we get into the setup of the USB 520 and 530, I'd like to state that Futech offers a system calibration service. Contact our sales team for more information on the system's calibration or visit the recalibration section on our website. The spec sheet for the USB 520 and 530 can be found on our website and contains the performance specifications as well as the wiring for the sensor. In addition to finding the wiring on the USB 520 and USB 530 spec sheet, Futech also offers a wiring calculator on the Futech website that will show the connections from the sensor to the USB 520 and USB 530. Following the wiring code on the spec sheets, pin A plus excitation and C minus excitation are used as power connections for non-amplified bridge sensors as the power connections. The USB device will supply 4.6 volts DC as the excitation or power to the sensor on these pins. Pins B plus signal and D minus signal are used to connect the output of a non-amplified sensor to the USB device which can accept a signal up to plus or minus 400 millivolts per volt. For sensors with an amplified output, pins F supply output and G ground are used to supply power. The instrument can supply a voltage up to 24 volts DC at 1 watt. Pins J minus V and K plus V are utilized to connect the amplified output of the sensor to the USB device for both a voltage and current output sensor. A separate 5 volt output is available on pins G, ground, and H, positive 5 output to supply items such as the encoder in the TRS-605 rotary torque sensor. In addition, pins L leading pulse and pins M lagging pulse can be utilized for the output of an encoder to allow the USB 520 and 530 to capture information for speed and angle. There are two methods available for calibrating the USB 520, scale method and USB calibration. The scale method allows the current stored calibration information to be scaled to hand-entered parameters, leaving the information in the USB 520 untouched. USB calibration utilizes a live calibration with known loads and overwrites the current calibration information with the new results. To use the scale method, click on the top tab, Calibration Mode. Under the Calibration Mode tab, click on the Scale Method sub-tab. There are three steps listed for Scale Method. 1. Settings, 2. Parameters, and 3. Save Parameters. After all three steps are completed, the Scale Method can be turned on by clicking on the Enable Scale Method button. Number 1. Settings will enable the parameters to the right. Choose the appropriate serial number from the Serial Number drop-down list. Enter the serial's millivolt per volt output into the top full scale 1 and 2 boxes. Next, enter the capacity of the new sensor into the full scale 1 and 2 capacity boxes and choose the appropriate units from the output units drop down list. After the parameters are set, choose number 2 from the left side, set parameters, followed by number 3, save parameters. At this time, since it has created a text file with the parameters to scale the specified serial number 2 once the Enable Scale Method button is activated. Click on the Enable Scale Method button to enable the saved parameters. With Senseit, you can view and load the multiple profiles stored in the USB device, which contain calibration information. To access the profiles, right-click in the display table of the display mode screen in the Sensit software and choose Sensor Profile. The USB 520 and USB 530 has three system profiles with one in millivolts per volt, one in voltage, and one in current. The three system profiles are non-adjustable, but there are four additional profiles that are user programmable. While going over the calibration setup for the USB 520 and 530, I will also be performing a calibration using a TRS-605 20 newton meter rotary torque sensor with a 5 volt amplified output and encoder with 360 pulses per rotation. To set up a calibration profile in Sensei, go to the calibration mode tab 
and choose the USB calibration sub tab. Following the steps on the left side, each step will become available after the prior step has been completed. Start the process by clicking on step one, settings. When settings is chosen, a pop-up window will appear with options to list the parameters of the calibration. Box six is used to specify the type of sensor that will be connected to the USB device. Bridge is available for non-amplified millivolt per volt sensors and voltage or current is available for amplified output sensors. Note that for each type of output, a pulse can also be specified, which would be for sensors that have encoders, which output a TTL type pulse to measure angle and speed. Box 7 is used to specify the range of the output of the sensor and will allow the USB device to scale itself accordingly to the input range. Box 8 is used to specify the voltage that will be supplied to the sensor. Note that when using the standard millivolt per volt connection with a plus or minus excitation, a nominal 5 volt DC supply will be used. The value selected in box 8 will be the supply voltage on the pins F, supply output, and G, ground, and is intended for amplified sensors. Box 9 can be used to specify how many pulses per rotation a device, such as an encoder, will have and will be used by the USB 520 and USB 530 to help determine degree calculations. Box 10 should be the sensor serial number to assist in identifying which profile should be loaded when connecting to the USB device to a sensor. Box 11 is used to specify the units to be natively displayed in Sensit. Note, it will be possible to convert units in Sensit, but the units selected by Box 11 will be the default units. Box 12 is used to specify the number of loads that will be used in the live calibration. Using more than one load is beneficial as the USB 520 and 530 offer a linearization mode where calibration points are utilized during sensor measurements to account for the sensor's actual linear output, offering better accuracy. Box 13 is used to determine how many decimal places will be available in the display of the loads that will be used in the calibration. Box 14 can be utilized to offer a channel name and is intended for use with sensors that have a multiple access capability, such as our MBA 500 thrust and torque series. Box 15 is used to indicate that a calibration will be performed in multiple directions, such as tension and compression. Box 16 and 17 are used to specify the positive and negative direction of the sensor, which will be utilized in the calibration. The capacity for each direction used is entered as well as the direction type, such as compression or tension. Box 18 is used to select which profile number the calibration will be stored to. After the parameters are set, press the Apply button to apply the settings, followed by the OK button to complete and close the parameter setup window. The next step in the calibration is to click Generate Test. When Generate Test is selected, a table will appear in the right-hand window. In the table, a column showing the ID number, load to be applied, output ADC captured, fixture correction, and nonlinearity percentage will be displayed. The output is the analog digital value that the USB device captures and assigns to the incoming voltage from the sensor for each applied load. The fixture correction is the analog to digital value which takes into account any fixtures used during the test. This is beneficial as it allows the calibration results to be unaffected by the fixture used during the calibration. The nonlinearity column will state the calculated nonlinearity as a percentage of the full capacity of the sensor and is the amount the points are from a perfect straight line. To capture readings from the USB device, click on the first cell under the output ADC value and to the right of the natural zero load. The natural zero load will be the output of the connected sensor without any fixture attached. Press enter on the keyboard to capture an analog to digital value that will represent the natural zero from the attached sensor. The test will automatically proceed to the next cell down in the output column, awaiting an enter press to capture the output for the next load. The next load will be a zero load and would be the sensor with the fixture attached but no loads applied. After the capture of the zero with the fixture, continue through the loading points while applying the listed amount in the load column 
and pressing enter to capture the resulting analog to digital value. Once all the points have been captured, step 3 save parameters will be available on the left and will be used to save the captured ADC values. The next step will be to press step 4 save calibration which will take the saved results and write the results into the USB 520 and USB 530 profile. During this step, the fixture correction will be calculated and applied. Also, the nonlinearity will be calculated and displayed. This step 5, record shunt, is not available for the USB 520 and USB 530. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about the USB 520 and USB 530. For more information, Contact us at futech at futech.com or sales at futech.com.